Hello guys, Cyprian here from fu for all and I have today some good news for you. We'll have a look at how to generate this kind of uh, model in OpenFoam and this is very exciting because what you see here is actually um, a tutorial of OpenFoam. It's a test model that is provided with OpenFoam and this example comes uh, really prepackaged. You just have to run it and you will be able to see the flow around this uh, motorbike like this and this will allow you to generate automatically uh, the fluid volume around this motorbike and everything is provided so it's really easy to set up and this measure that does all the stuff is called the snappy hex mesh so what this snappy hex mesh does is really cool it actually it fills the void in between your model and the fluid volume using hex elements like this uh, in the first time and in the second time it's refined meshing so that it really um, goes as close as possible to the geometry because of course this is what you want so we'll have a look at how to use that on the latest version of OpenFoam the, the version 8 because there are some small differences with the previous versions so if you have been using previous versions that You'll, you'll see the difference um, and yeah that that will be very cool so that will be in the first time and then the second time I'll show you how to um, put your own model into this template to generate flow around the model so the first step is to open a new terminal and to CD into your foam run folder here and the second step will be to copy my uh, tutorial model into this uh, folder I have here. So um, you have to look where you installed your OpenFoam and you have a tutorial folder here. You have all the kind of solvers that are supported by OpenFoam. So the tutorial I'm looking for is in uh, Incompressible. Then you have to open Simple Foam Solver and you see you have this motorbike example so what I'm gonna do is simply copy all this folder into my current um, simulation directory so for that I'm gonna right click on here properties um, control A to select all, the, all of this copy and then when in my folder I'll do a CPR which means I will copy everything including the folders and to a simple foam motorbike and a dot to say that I want it copied here so you could just drag and drop of course the folder into the other folder that would work as well um, I just said th this is easier so let's see if this is copied and you see I have this motorbike folder here so it's good I'm good to go now the only thing if I go into my run folder so you see everything is already built up and you have a geometry folder and the other thing is that the model is not here by default so the geometry is somewhere else so you have to copy the geometry as well into this folder um, and to find where this geometry is because there is a lot of stuff into into this tutorial folder and everything so it's difficult to find out where it is um, what I'll do is that I'll open a terminal here and I will use locate function locate and uh, the geometry file uh, is called motorbike so motorbike.obg I will look for that and you see that it's in tutorial resources so you have a folder called resources here where you find all the geometries uh, and this motorbike motorbike here is here so you have to unzip it um, so already unzipped it so I will just drag and drop that into my current run folder and put it into the geometry folder here and that's all I need to do uh, now if we look at the other um, the other t system uh, files you see that you have a bunch of dictionaries here 
you have the block mesh, which we usually uh, used in the previous tutorials, but you have also snappy hex mesh decked, and you have a surface features decked. So the, the block mesh will basically control the volume around, so the big block of fluid will be defined in this one, and the, the function for the snappy hex mesh will be uh, define this one and the, the extraction of the geometry feature will be defined in this file here. So before we go uh, further and launch the simulation, let's go into uh, OpenFOAM user guide to have a quick look about this snappy XMesh to understand what it does. So if you go to the section 5.4 mesh generation with the snappy XMesh, then you have a description uh, with some images of uh, what it does. So here you have your volume, you have an STL surface uh, in it, and the snappy X mesh, so you have the definition of all the function used, will basically create hex mesh all around like this, and then it will um, progressively refine the mesh all around here until uh, it follows the features of your geometry and this is defined into the surface features command and dictionaries so that's why you will have to run this command before anything else um, and then you have uh, it will remove the the cell inside the volumes uh, and then snap around uh, here and then it will um, go closer to the geometry as much as possible and you have even the function to create uh, mesh layers around the model so if this is important for you this is really really good so now that we know how to do this uh, of course there's a lot of functions and everything is explained on this page so you know you should save this page and have a look at um, all of the variables so let's quick quickly have a look at those dictionaries. So this is a surface feature dictionary, which is actually very simple. So this is where your uh, geometry file is specified. And then you have the snappy hex mesh dictionary. So here you have much more options. So you have the the motorbike mesh defined here, you have a refining box, um, you have a bunch of parameters to refine the cells, and you, you really have a good description of what each parameter does, so take your time to read that. Um, then you have some refinement surfaces, um, you have snap control for uh, the snapping, so um, number of iteration between uh, the, the the roll size of the mesh around the volume to the, the mesh around your model um, and at the end you have the layers control so we'll not go over definition of each of this because everything is written here so you can just take your time and read what, what this does and finally you have the block mesh where um, you see the basic fluid volume cube is defined here. Okay, so now let's see how to run that this example. So let's go and start meshing this example. So let's see the again in my foam run folder and see the into my motorbike folder. And the first thing to do is to uh, create the block mesh around the model. So I will use the, the command that you know already, block mesh. And this will generate um, my, my mesh around the model. So you can see here the number of cells and points that have been generated. Now I have this around my model, but I don't have anything inside. So if I where to look at it in Paraview, I will just have the block around. Um, now the next step is to define the surface features inside that block mesh like we saw in the user guide of OpenFoam. So for that I use the command surface, um, surface features 
with an S, and it's the same name than this dictionary, right? In the previous version of OpenFOAM, it was Suffer's Features Extract, so there's a bit of difference here. So you click on Enter. Okay, uh, I got it wrong. There is a capital letter here. And okay, so this is pretty quick, and it generates an eMesh. Um, so if you go back into this constant geometry, you see that you, know, you have now an eMesh object where the information of your uh, surface are defined. And now we are ready to run the snappy hex mesh. So just run snappy hex mesh, enter. And that's where that it will take a bit of time. So uh, let's wait until this uh, completes. So now that this is completed, you should check that there is no error. And uh, here it says that um, finish the meshing without errors. And it took 200 seconds to in total to mesh that. So that really depends on the size of your model and number of surfaces and everything. I think it, it's still pretty fast for uh, this kind of uh, meshing. Uh, you see at the same time that in the folder here that I had, uh, I have one, two, three folder that have been generated. So if I open this, you see that you have poly mesh um, and the different kind of uh, uh, layers and, and thing you will need for your model. So before we'll have before running our simulation, we'll have to copy everything which is in the zero constant folder and put it into this third folder in order to be able to launch the simulation. But before I launch the simulation, let's have a quick look at what I uh, generated using Parafoam. So let's open OpenFoam Reader apply and okay it looks like uh, looks like a cube without nothing inside let's have a look at surface with edges and you see this part here has been refined a lot so that that's the part where my uh, my uh, motorbike is actually located let's make this um, transparent so I can see what is going inside so if you go down in the property here you have opacity that you can decrease a bit like this, and now I am seeing this um, this bike. So, by the way, I have I think I have selected this option apply change to parameter automatically. If you have not, you'll have to click on the apply button every time. Um, okay, so I'm getting this, and you see that the so this is the first iteration where um, it fills the volume with hex. Now, there is a second step, so you have to go to the next frame in order to view the actual model that you will be uh, simulating, right? And for the moment, of course, there's no results because there, this is just a mesh without uh, anything else. So we'll look uh, a bit better at how to visualize that once the computation is done and finished. Okay, so I think Parview gave me some errors um, because it cannot find the pressure and of course because I didn't calculate the pressure yet. So no problem, you can ignore that. Uh, now let's launch the analysis and for that, so previously what I've done is just I've done simple foam and uh, this will launch the calculation. Now I will use uh, MPI run command. So I'm on uh, Ubuntu. Uh, and I have installed the MPI and this will allow me to to run the calculation in parallel so this is really really important for this kind of simulation which takes a lot of time because I will be able to harness the power of the eight cores of my computer so you do MPI run and follow that by the name of the solver simple foam and enter and now the uh, solver will start to solve your model. So this simulation is, uh, is, is pretty big, so it will take uh, some time to, to complete. 
So uh, I think it takes around one hour, or maybe a bit less. So I'll just leave it um, working like that, leave it solving, and we'll come back when this is uh, finished. Okay, so my simulation is now finished. So you see that I have um, several folders with the result that have been uh, exported here in my main folder. So one, two, three, and four, because the result have been only exported every hundred time steps. So uh, let's use Parafoam and open those results to have a look at what I have. Okay, apply. So we have our volume. So make sure that you're looking at uh, the part that interests you. So here I'm selected only the internal mesh. Um, let's view that with the edges. Let's make it a bit transparent. So I'm decreasing the opacity here. Okay, um, and I have in this time inspector, I have the, the various time steps of my simulation. So at this, now at the first time step, I have no result because I'm still in the mesh, uh, mesh stage that I already showed to you at the beginning. So second step, third step. Yeah, I'm getting some kind of error here, but it's uh, not a problem at all. Okay, now I'm getting the first step where I have results and you see that I see the, the speed velocity start to appear and I'm starting to view some results on the model here. So, like this. Um, so if I want to display this, uh, the motorbike and see the result in the fluid at the same time, because now I'm inside the volume like this, uh, what I can do is basically to to add a filter. So I'll press Control Space and type Clip to add a clip filter. So uh, let's change to the Y normal. Let's hide the plane. Let's apply that. Um, so I'll temporarily hide the bike, and you see that I'm I'm now looking at this um, this view. Let's display the bike, and now I can look at um, the velocity here. So now I'm getting what I was showing you at the beginning, um, the velocity of the fluid around this bike uh, in the first increment uh, of the simulation. So if I go to the second increment, or the third, or the last one, you see that I'm I see, I get the flow starts to, to become almost the same. Uh, now if you want to change a bit the colors or everything, you're going to view um, color map editor. And for example, I want only 12 colors, for example. So 12. And uh, let's say that I want to change the color map to um, jet, for example. Now I'll... I'll able to see something like this right so it really depends on what you um, what you want as a color scheme you can also change the minimum and maximum of the legend um, to get a, another different um, visualization okay so um, now that I've uh, we have looked at those results. Let's close Paraview and I'll show you how to modify this with your own uh, model. So I'll, I'll create a very simple model, just a cylinder using uh, Salome and then I'll show you how to put it into this template so you can simulate it with uh, OpenFoam in the same way. So first let's open Salome so let's use the last version installed. Okay, 
and uh, in Salome I will use the geom module to generate my cylinder so let's just create the cylinder like that um, so for the radius and the height I will use um, let's say 0 0.3 and uh, 0 0.5 let's zoom out a bit maybe it's a bit too large 0 0.2 maybe okay 0 0.2 0 0.5 apply and close um, now because the 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 axis in uh, open foam are oriented uh, towards y so I'll, I, I will rotate this along the y axis so operation rotation let's rotate that along the x axis and uh, 90 degree reverse okay so let's move the cylinder to put it around um, let's say um, let's make some kind of block that will give me an, an indication of where I want to, to put the cylinder so I will only export a cylinder but uh, I think it will be useful to have a block like that so um, in the x direction I want to have uh, 5 meter in the and then one meter and one meter like this so it will be a block like that so let's make this block transparent so you have to cl right click here transparency yeah around that and now I'll just move the cylinder translation so along the x-axis um, will be um, maybe three. Oh, sorry now I'm, I'm moving the block I want to move the cylinder okay so it's around three maybe it's a bit too much too like that and um, in the y direction sorry in the y direction I will not move it z direction too much 0 0.5 Five. So if I look on the top, yeah, it's in the middle. I, it's cool. Okay, let, let's apply and close. Okay, so now I have my cylinder, and now let's export the cylinder. So make sure you click on the right part to export, and um, export that in STL file. And I'll put it here for the moment. Cylinder.stl. Now let's uh, close Salome. And what I'll do is that I basically use the same template that the motorbike, but because I already did some change in calculation in it, I will just delete this one and I will copy again the one from the press tutorial which has uh, nothing changed into it. And then next up is to put my cylinder model into this. Uh, yeah, let's change the name first. So let's call that cylinder flow and let's put that into the constant folder and then into the geometry folder. Um, and now the only thing I need to change are a few dictionaries. So the surface feature dictionary, snappy X mesh dictionary, mesh quality dictionary maybe, and the block mesh dictionary. So let's start with the surface feature dict. So in this one, I need to change the name of the object to cylinder.stl. And um, you can change some of the features here. For example, keep non-manifold edges, no. So I'll, I'll put that to yes. I'm not sure it is really uh, useful in this case, but let's do that. Um, then let's go into the snappy X mesh. And you have a lot of options here, but the, the things I need to do is first change the name. Cylinder. Then 
put the name of the file. Um, I don't think I will need this refinement box for this case. So what I'll do is that I'll just comment that out like this. Um, let's go down and see what are the other important stuff. So the name here. So when I run the the feature, um, the surface features comment, I will have the cylinder dot image generated. Uh, here the level of um, edge refinement here is set up to six, so I I don't think I will need that. So I'll put that to zero, and then um, surface base refinement. So in this case, I'll change also that to cylinder and the surface wise mean and maximum refinement level will be two and two because it's really a simple model. So I don't need that much refinement. Um, okay. And then I'll change the name of the group to cylinder group. Um, I will not use layers, so what I'll do is I will just delete that and also I'll come back at the beginning of the file and set the layers to false. Now let's see, um, yeah, there is still one important thing in here is the mesh selection uh, point. So there is this point that you need to, to set up somewhere inside your mesh, but it should not be on the geometry uh, either. So in this case, uh, it's, it's a location 3.3 and 0.43, and I think it will fall outside of the box. So uh, let's put that point at 0.5. Zero point five and zero point five. That way, it's inside the box and it's not inside the cylinder. And I think that's all I need for this. And now the next step is the block mesh. And here you see you have the this box. So this box is, if you look at what I have in Salme, it's the size of this box here. So I just have to change location of those points here to set up the correct dimension of the box. So let's do this. So that's it, my box dimension with all the points. Then the other, um, the other, so the refinement of this, so I, I think I can increase that a bit to, um, let's do that 60 and uh, 20, 20 maybe. So this will be the, the number of elements in each uh, direction. And the other thing, I don't need to change those. So I think it's okay. So it's okay for the mesh, but now to run the analysis, I will have to change the boundary condition as well. So I have to open each of those files and basically the change the name of the group, which is now called cylinder group like this. Let's do that for all the boundary conditions. Okay. And now I think I'm ready to generate the mesh. So let's start by, um, let's start by running the block mesh command. Oh, okay, I have to cd into my folder, of course. Cylinder flow, block mesh. Okay, now let's uh, run the surface features 
common. Now the cylinder.emesh has been generated. Let's check that in the constant geometry. Yeah, I have my cylinder.emesh. And now let's run the snappy. Well, let's open this file first. Snappy hex mesh. Okay. Okay, so finish without errors, so I think it's fine. And don't forget to copy those, copy all those into my uh, latest folder here. And let's use now Parafoam to have a look at what we have. Parafoam. So we have uh, the cylinder, the whole of the cylinder. You can see there is uh, three layers of refinement to go from this size to the cylinder. And this is only the first step of the X mesh, um, the snappy X mesh. Let's go to the next frame. So now we see that I have snapping to the cylinder. So uh, I think um, it's pretty good. And let's um, run the simulation to have a look at what we get. So I'll use the exact same boundary condition that the previous motorbike example. Uh, maybe the only thing I'll change is uh, into the control dict. Um, instead of having 100 time interval, I will put that to 10 maybe, in order to get a bit more um, time step results to be, a to be able to animate that a bit better. So let's run that, MPI run, so this time should be faster, simple foam. So now it's running, let's, let's wait that this uh, completes. Okay, so now that this is over, let's have a look at our results using Parafoam. So let's look at the edges here. So we see all the time steps. And um, so this is my velocity. Let's cut that clip. Oh, I just clipped it in the wrong direction. So this is a pressure, this is the fluid velocity on the first increment. So if we animate all of that, now we are getting the, the flow. So that's it, that's my flow around my uh, cylinder. So it's not as fancy as the motorbike, but um, that's just to show you how to use your own model. So you could replace a cylinder by uh, any CAD model you have. So if you have a very good, um, I know, a uh, car or something like that, you, you can try uh, to see and to compare what is the difference with uh, this kind of sample model now that you know how to modify that by yourself. And don't hesitate to have a look at the different options for meshing of the Snappy X Mesh. There's a lot to understand uh, about this. And well, that's basically all for this video. So I hope you learned a lot from, from it. And let me know in the comment what you want to learn next time. Um, I'm really trying to, to, to do more and more videos about open foam. So if you have some ideas, I'm open to uh, listening to what you want to see. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a like. Um, thank you so much.